A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Terry Hansen had been sailing a toy boat on a creek that wound through the valley. As he walked toward the small cabin where he lived with his father and mother, he suddenly saw black smoke rising straight up into the still air behind the hill, and then he saw the flaming cabin. Before the door lay the body of a man, and nearby, in a formless heap, a woman. With a cry of anguish, he raced forward and bent over the lifeless bodies of his parents, and then he heard the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Well, kid, it looks like you were lucky. You still got your yellow hair. Clancy, what you tell you? Can't you see that's his ma and pa lying there? Oh, sorry, kid. I, I just meant you're lucky to be alive. What's your name, son? It's Terry. You better come with me for a spell, Terry. We walk over there under that oak tree for a minute. But, but my ma, my pa. I know, son. Don't talk about it, kid. Come on, get up and walk with me. Clancy, you get things cleared up a bit. Sure, sure. You take the kid away while I do it. Come on, man. Now, son, we'll just go over here and watch the sunset. Cry if you want to. Might help. If I, if I'd only been there to help, I... it's a good thing you weren't. That band of Indians have burned every ranch and hut for twenty miles. Killed everyone they could lay their filthy hands on. I was at the stream about a half a mile from here, sailing my boat. If only I... Don't think about it, son. Just be thankful you're still alive. What's your name? Hanson. Terry Hanson. Well, that's a fine sound and name. How old are you? Thirteen. You act a lot older, even if you don't look it. See, you know, I could use a boy like you on my ranch. If you're willing to come with me. Yeah, I guess I better do it if you want me. It, it just, it just isn't anything, anything left. Oh, <laughs> all right, then it's settled, then, huh? <laughs> now I'll just leave you here for a while, and I'll go back and help Clancy. When we're ready to leave, I'll call you.
Big Bill Craig was the kindest man Terry had ever known. But life at the Craig Ranch wasn't easy for the boy. Big Bill was always busy, and the ranch hands were rough, hard men who delighted in teasing the small boy whose burning ambition was to be the best rider in the West. Each time the cow hands rode the wild broncos that were rounded up and put in the corral, he watched every move with burning, envious eyes. Watch him, boy! Him under control, let him ride it out. Well, kid, seen some pretty good riding today. Of course, <laughs> there's nothing to what you'll be doing in a couple of months. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll like to try today, huh? Maybe you break your next run. No, I bet I can do it. <laughs> well, maybe we should let him try. After all, he's going to be the best rider in the world, ain't he? Well, and he better start pretty soon. What horse you want to ride? Uh, ride, kid. Clancy. Big Bill, he will not like it if we do this. Big Bill said to let the kid do what he wants to do. Let him have a belly full of what a wild horse can do to you. You want to try, kid? Well, sure. Sure, I'll try. I'm not afraid. Want to pick your horse? I'd like to ride that yellow one. Big Bill said I could have him after he's broke. You mean the sandy-looking nag over near the fence? He's kind of gold-looking to me. Clancy, I, I do not think we should do this. Go on, Max Rope, and we'll have some fun. You're going to be a bronc buster, kid. Come on. <laughs> Terry's heart pounded madly as he got into the saddle while the cowboys held the big horse that trembled with fear and excitement. Let him go, man! All thought blacked out of Terry's mind except the desperate will to cling to the back of the plunging, rearing beast beneath him. It was like riding a tornado, and every bone and muscle in his body seemed to shake and rattle. Then suddenly he felt himself leave the horse's back, and he hit the ground with a jarring blow. Horse, Max. I'll put the kid out. Here, I got you, kids. Now, over the fence. Stop. Get back there. Back outside. <laughs> there you are. Now, can you stand up? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Your knees are a little rubbery, ain't they? No, I, I can stand it. If I can just hold on to the fence. <laughs> well, I must say, you make a pretty bird flying through the air. <laughs> Who said a man can't fly? <laughs> He's not hurt, huh? Greatest rider in the world hurt? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, he make better eagle than rider. <laughs> it was mid-morning of the following day, and the Lone Ranger, with his Indian companion, Tonto, rode slowly along the trail near the Craig Ranch. The sun was hot on their backs, and the Lone Ranger reined in his big white horse as they topped a small hill and saw the ranch buildings below. We can get water there, Toto. That's the Craig Ranch, I believe. Ah, that one place Curly Joe not burn. Curly Joe's afraid to raid the big ranches. He and his band of Indians go after the little people with no protection. That half-breed is really a coward. Kimasabi. Huh? Look, that horse come from ranch. Him go plenty fast. Looks like a young boy riding him. He's a good little rider. Horse tried to throw him. Sticking to it, though. Hey, that horse is wild. I wonder. Otto, it's running toward that scrub oak. Come on, Silver! Get him up, town. Boy, can't stop it. He'll be brushed off. We'll try to catch it. The great horse, Silver, galloped faster and faster with Scout at his heels, cutting across the path of the runaway horse with Terry clinging to its back. But though the wild horse was fast, Silver was faster and carried his master close to the speeding animal. The Lone Ranger grasped the bridle and turned the horse's head as Tonto rode up on the other side. Oh, there. Ho, ho. Hold him, Tonto. Uh, I'm me, got him. One there. Ho, ho. Ho, Silver. Ho, ho. Well, son, that was close. Gosh, uh, I couldn't stop him. You'd better get off and rest a while. We'll tie him to a tree for you. Go on, we'll hold him. Yeah, I guess I better. Let me tie him, horse, Kimasari. Fine, Toto. I'd like to talk to the boy. Said he's silver. He's a big fellow. Get him up, Scout. Come, Toto. Come. Better sit down for a minute, son. You're a little shaky. Yeah. See? You were in a mask. Are you... It's all right. I'm not an outlaw. Oh, you must be. Please don't take my horse. He's the first horse I ever owned. Please don't take oh, him. I have no intention of taking him. I just want to help you. Oh, just give him back to me. If you do, I, I won't tell anyone I saw you. <laughs> did Honest, you, uh, Did you ever see one of these before? What? What is it? A silver bullet. If you've been around the Craig Ranch, you must have heard some stories about silver bullets. And you're, you're riding a big white horse. And there's an Indian with you. 
Well, you must be... You're the Lone Ranger. You haven't told me your name yet. It's Terry. Terry Hansen. That horse of yours hasn't been ridden much, has it, Terry? Uh, no, sir. I, I was trying to break it myself. <laughs> You're rather young to be a bronc buster, aren't you? They laughed at me yesterday when Nugget threw me. Nugget? That's what I named my horse. He's kind of gold-looking. Yes, he is. They said I, I looked more like a bird than a rider, so I'm going to show him. Oh? Whom do you mean? The ranch hands at Mr. Craig's ranch. Mr. Craig gave me that horse. Did he tell you to break the horse alone? Well, no, sir, he didn't, but when people make fun of you, you sort of want to... Yes, yes, I know what you mean. But Big Bill Craig wouldn't want you to be hurt. Do you work for him? I help around. I, I like Big Bill, but I don't want to stay at the ranch much longer. Why? I want to be a good rider. I want to be the best rider in the West. But the, they're always making fun of me and laughing. You are a good rider, Terry. There aren't many boys your age who could ride that horse the way you did. The cowhands all left the ranch today, all except old Ned. He helped me saddle Nugget. I wanted to be riding Nugget when they got back tonight and laugh in their faces. I'll show them. A wise man doesn't risk his neck to show off, Terry. He saves his courage for a time when it's really needed. Then he doesn't care whether anyone is there to applaud or not. Well, yeah. I guess I did want to show off a little. Maybe they were right to laugh. But you have a lot of courage and you can ride. But when they laugh at me and make fun of me, it, it does something to me inside. I get mad and then I get afraid. Then I can't do anything right. I just have to train Nugget when they're not around. I see. Terry, I have an idea. Why don't you spend the rest of the day with Tonto and me and let us help you with Nugget? Gosh, that'd be wonderful. Will you really help me? On uh, two conditions. Oh, I'll do anything you say. First, we don't want anyone to know we're staying in this territory. Oh, I won't tell. If I can just ride to the ranch on Nugget... Wait, I... just a minute, Terry. You haven't heard the second condition. Oh. The second one is that you don't laugh in their faces. <laughs> The following days were happy ones for Terry as he rode proudly over the ranch on Nugget. But the ranch hands soon discovered another way to tease him, by making fun of his horse. Then Big Bill Craig went east on business. The following day, Clancy discovered Terry packing his saddlebag. Well, kid, where do you think you're going? You and that tinsel mule going to take a trip? I don't like it here without Big Bill. I'm leaving. Oh, <laughs> Going to start a ranch of your own somewhere? <laughs> Laugh if you want to. But I'm going to Frontier Town and get a job on a Pony Express. Big Bill said I could try it any time I wanted to. Well, I'll be doggone. Well, how do you know they'll hire you? Big Bill told me all about it. They like good riders that don't weigh much. But you're just a sniff-nosed kid. They've hired lots of young boys. And I can ride as well as any of them. You don't even know how to get to Frontier Town. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and don't you try to stop me. Oh, I ain't stopping you. But don't blame us for laughing when you come back, begging for the job of stable boy. Terry had covered over 30 miles on his way to Frontier Town. It was noon of the second day when he stopped to water his horse at a small stream that crossed the trail. He was filling his canteen when suddenly he heard hoofs on the trail behind him and a swarthy man stopped beside him at the stream. Hot day. Uh, yeah, it is. Fine horse you've got. Oh, he sure is. He's fast, too. You live around here? I did live at the Craig Ranch, but I'm leaving. I'm going to Frontier Town. You've got a long way to go. I'll get there in a couple days. How much you take for that horse? Oh, he's not for sale. Oh, no? Good, then I just take him for nothing. Hey, stop! Let go of that horse! Stop, I say stop! You dirty thief! You... Nugget... Nugget! <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The sunset painted deep tints of violet and rose across the sky as Terry trudged wearily along the trail. Then just as the sun touched the top of the hills to the west, he heard the sound of hoofbeats and saw two riders on the plain to his left. He called to them wildly. Hello! Help me! Hello! As the two horsemen galloped closer, Terry recognized the masked man and the Indian who had befriended him. Why, Terry, what are you doing here? Oh, golly, I'm glad it's you. My horse was stolen this morning. I'm on my way to Frontier Town. Well, that's where we're heading, too. Who stole your horse? He was a half-breed, I think. He, he had curly black hair and black squinty eyes and dark skin. He was shorter than you. Well, that sounds like Curly Joe, Kim Sabi. Who? Curly Joe's a half-breed who has been leading a band of Indians through the West. They've been raiding small ranches and farms, killing people, burning houses. What? And... Well, uh, what's wrong, Terry? You're as white as a sheet. My father and mother were killed. Our house was burned. And now the same man has stolen Nugget. I'm, I'm sorry, Terry. I didn't know. Todd and I are looking for Curly Joe's son. You've given us the first real lead on him. We know he's in this part of the country, and now we know what kind of a horse he's riding. You think maybe we can trail him and place him steel horse? I think the best plan would be to go back to the stream. Terry can show us where it is. We'll camp there for the night. Dawn tomorrow, Toto, you can follow Curly Joe's trail, and I'll take Terry to Frontier Town to warn him. Ah. You think Curly Joe's hideout might be near Frontier Town? Maybe, son. Toto, I'll meet you at our usual camp outside of town after I leave Terry there. If you discover the hideout, come there as soon as possible. Ah. It was almost noon when the Lone Ranger stopped Silver at the outskirts of Frontier Town. Terry rode in back of the masked man on the big white horse. You can walk into town from here, Terry. People might get curious about my mask if I go any farther. Easy. I'll go straight to the express office. I tell them to send the word by Pony Express to all the towns in this territory to watch out for Curly Joe. You can give them his description. I'll do that. And maybe they'll give me a job riding one of these days. You could do it, I'm sure. But how about Big Bill Craig? He may not want you to leave his ranch. Oh, we talked that over before Big Bill left. He's gone east on business. He said I could do this any time I wanted to. But I, I was always welcome to come back if it didn't work out. Bill Craig is a fine man. I'll, I'll see you again, won't I, sir? I think so, Terry. After Todd and I catch up with Curly Joe, we'll come back and look for you here in Frontier Town. Maybe we'll be able to bring Nugget back to you. I wish I could help you track down that outlaw. You'll be doing your bit by warning the people about him. Good luck, son. I'll go back and wait at our camp for Toto. Monsilver! I hope you catch Curly Joe. Good luck. As Terry entered the office of the Pony Express, Jim Seeley, the agent, was talking to an old rancher. Terry rushed forward excitedly. Could I speak to you a minute? Uh, sure, son. What's wrong? There's an outlaw in this territory. His name's Curly Joe. He heads a band of Indians. They raid farms and kill people. Everyone better be told about him. Well, now, where'd you get all that information? Sure you ain't just had a bad dream? You say, son, ain't you Jeb Hansen's boy? Well, yeah, I'm Terry Hansen. Well, you're Mr. Jacobs. Hey, I sure am. You know this kid, Nick? I sure I know him. I came west on the same wagon train with him and his folks. How's your mom, Pa, Terry? They're dead. dead. They were killed by the same outlaw I'm telling you about, Curly Joe. He killed them and burned our house. Gosh, kid, I'm sorry to hear that. And your story's true. Of course it's true, if he says it is. Jeb Hansen's son wouldn't lie. Well, I'm going out and spread the word about Curly Joe myself. What does he look like? He's a half-breed, about five foot nine. He's got black curly hair and beady black eyes, and he's riding a gold-colored horse with a light mane. Well, I'll notify the sheriff right away. New Jim. Yes. You better do like Terry says and pass the word along the line by your riders. Yes. I'll see you later, Terry. Uh, well, I'm sorry I kind of doubted your story, Terry. Not knowing you at all. I'll pass the word along. Well, thanks, sir. You, you don't happen to, to need a rider, do you? Why, no, not right now. 
Uh, you looking for a job? Oh, it's always been my ambition to be a rider on the Pony Express. Yeah, but you're pretty young. I'm not as young as I look. You don't act young, that's so. Kids get old fast out here, especially when they've had the experience you have. I'll keep your mind. That sounds like my rider from Red Valley. Come out with me. Oh, oh there she is. Oh. You help me, I'm hurt. Chip, what's wrong? Oh, that horse took a spill. Hey, hey. My horse took a spill. It fell on my leg. Yes, it's broken. I'll oh, catch him. He's falling. Hey, he's raining. Look out. Hey, Brian. Give me some help, Jack. All right. Put him down easy now. Watch him be. Get back, everybody. Get back. I'm right here on the platform, Jack. There. His leg's broken, all right. So wonder he made it. Must have taken a bad fall. Somebody get Doc Sanders. Oh, get him. You ready to hurt him? Yes, Nate. His leg's broken. Did you tell everybody about Curly Joe? Well, not everybody. But I'll tell this crowd right now. Listen, folks. I got some news. Oh, yeah. oh, Come on, yeah. Yeah. Stay right there till the dark comes. What's going How do you mind? feel now, Dick? No. What's I'll be all right. What's the news? Now, listen, folks. Yeah. There's a yellow coyote in this territory that calls himself Curly Joe. He's leading a pack of murdering redskins at raid ranches, burning and killing. We're attacking his description on the post office bulletin board. Tell your neighbors about him. This here boy right beside me, Terry Hansen, was burned out of house and home by him. And his ma and pa were killed. Jim is going to send word to Carson City and warn him. I've got to have a rider, though, boys. My rider broke his leg. Will anybody take his place? Oh, please, let me do it, please. I know what Curly Joe looks like. Please let me carry the mail to Carson City. Let me carry the message about Curly Joe. But, Terry, you're so young. Why don't you let him do it, Jim? He'll make it. Go on, let the kid do it. Sure, his mom and Paul were killed by Curly Joe. Let him do it, Jim. Well, all right, kid. I'll have to sway you in, give you instructions. Oh, here comes Doc Saunders. Yeah. Them two boys. As the crowd parted to let the doctor through, nobody noticed an Indian who raced quickly to his horse and sped out of town. At the Lone Ranger's camp near Frontier Town, Silver whinnied as he heard Scout's hoofbeats coming at a fast gallop. The Lone Ranger rose to his feet as Tonto leaped from his horse. Oh, Scout, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. Kimasabi. Tonto, were you able to trail Curly Joe? Uh, me find trail. It take long time. Me come from Curly Joe's camp now. You mean you were right in his camp? Uh, me pretend me want to join band. Did he believe you? Uh, and while we talk, Indian come from town. Him say man tell people in town about Curly Joe. Him say rider on Pony Express take word to Carson City. What's Curly Joe going to do? Well, him break camp right away. Him say then kill Pony Express rider at Three Forks. Then go to Car- Carson City. So he's planning to kill the Pony Express rider to keep him from warning Carson City. Huh. How many are in his band, Toto? Eight. Them not all have guns. Most have bow, arrow. We haven't time to go to Frontier Town first. We better cut straight across to Three Forks and try to save that rider. We'll stand a chance if we take them by surprise. Come on, if we hurry, we may be in time. Oh, City oh, Silver. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Terry's heart beat fast with joy and exultation as he galloped over the trail that led to Carson City. He was a rider on the Pony Express. As he neared Three Forks, he saw a band of horsemen coming toward the trail from the right. They were coming toward him at a dead gallop. Then Terry saw the horse that led them. It was Nugget and Curly Joe. The boy pulled up his horse and galloped off the trail, up a slope toward the shelter of some rocks. Faster, boy. I gotta get behind those rocks. But just then his pony slipped and fell. (laughs) Terry leaped from its back and scrambled behind the rock, where he turned to face his pursuers at the base of the slope. His gun shook in his hand as he fired. It was then that Terry saw two riders galloping toward the howling band below him. Four guns blazed at once as the Lone Ranger and Tonto closed in from the other direction. The startled band of Indians scattered, leaving their leader crumpled in the dust, clutching a bleeding shoulder. The Lone Ranger leaped from his horse beside Curly Joe, who lay whimpering in the dirt as Terry scrambled down the slope. It's Curly Joe, all right, Tonto. He's still alive. My shoulder. You drove him off. We've got Curly Joe. Why, Terry, what are you doing here? I'm riding the Pony Express. The other rider was hurt. I took his place. Well, I certainly didn't think you'd work that fast. It's all gone, Kimasabi. It's Curly Joe we wanted, Tonto. 
You better fix his shoulder and we'll get him on a horse. He's going back to Frontier Town with us. Uh, he picks up. Oh, golly, I was glad to see you coming. I thought I was a goner up there behind that rock. Tonto found out that Curly Joe was going to ambush the Pony Express rider. But we didn't know it would be you. Oh, look. There's Nugget. Oh, I'm glad he wasn't hurt. That pony you were riding seems to have hurt his leg when he fell. We better take him back to Frontier Town with us. Well, Nugget is yours now, son. You can change the saddles and ride him when you carry the mail. Tonto started ahead on the trail, leading a horse that carried Curly Joe firmly bound in the saddle. The Lone Ranger finished the job of helping Terry saddle Nugget. As he stood beside his great horse, Silver, Terry looked at him anxiously. Do you think they'll let Nugget and me stay on as regulars, as part of the Pony Express? <laughs> I'm sure they will, Terry. Oh, gosh. Thanks for everything, sir. Now, I'd better be going so the mail won't be late. We'll get Curly Joe back to Frontier Town. They'll hold him until you come back to identify him. Sorry we're going in opposite directions, boy. Any silver? Easy. Easy, boy. I hope we'll meet again, sir. So do I, son. Goodbye. Goodbye and good luck. One silver. Nugget, old boy. We're together again. Thanks to the Lone Ranger. Get up. Get up, boy. This is a copyrighted feature originated by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 